Hey everyone, this is Ty with Spicy Exotics. Tonight, we're going to do a demonstration on how we pollinate our flowers. We've gotten a few requests and we would like to start off by showing you the tools we're going to use. So, in front of me, we have a stainless steel bowl and very cheap paintbrush and that's it so let's light up the greenhouses and let's see what kind of flowers and activity we have going on <clears throat> so it looks like we have um, so it's it's about 9 9 30 and uh, this is a Nicaraguan red variety it's a purple fleshed even though the name states red so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna knock some of that purple fleshed pollen to Guatemalan species and once we loosen it up it falls on those bottom petals and then we're gonna collect it in our stainless steel bowl here This is also um, believed to be a self-fertile variety. So when we look to see how much we collected here, it's not a whole lot. Um, as the night goes on, the flower will give. I'm kind of brushing the stigma um, with some of its own pollen as I Try to get some of that pollen in the bowl here. So when we look here, that's some purple fleshed Nicaraguan red pollen here. And if we were to do a hybrid, we would find a non-self-fertile variety tonight. Or we would prep a self-fertile variety where uh, the stigma would only touch this pollen. And we'd have a genetic cross between this species from the pollen and the plant that has the um, stigma. So we're uh, just looking to see if we have any other flowers here. And that may be our only purple. Okay, I know we have some activity here. This is a deep red flesh variety here in front of us. We're going to knock some of that pollen off and just let it fall in here. One thing I want to point out is once we, we gather pollen here from just these two flowers, I want to... I want you to see the difference. I don't know if you could see or how clear the camera shows, but there's just a tremendous amount of pollen on this flower. And this is a deep, deep red flesh variety called Oriana. And when we look at that you can see here, we collected a generous amount of, of pollen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk right back over to this Nicaraguan red here. Use some of that pollen we just connect, collected. Just go ahead and dust it. The back side, the front side. And then we're done. It's a little repetitive, <clears throat> but I always say you wait all year long to get these flowers to bloom. You don't want to miss your opportunity. So it's still a little early in the night. I didn't want to wait too, too late. I'm going to go ahead and 
opening the flower up here. This is mainly uh, try to move some of these other species out the way here so we can get a clear shot. Oof. This is another red flesh variety um, by the name of Lake Atitlan Red. We have a few flowers from it blooming tonight. So what we're going to do is just collect all of that red, good, yummy red flesh pollen. And I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to go over to these white variety um, here is a David Bowie it's blooming pretty nicely tonight it bloomed last night as well David Bowie is a self fertile variety so it's really really easy for it to set fruit so we can use some of its own pollen, but I'm going to try to collect as much of this white flesh pollen because I'm going to use that white fleshed pollen to help pollinate the red flesh varieties that we have. So I'm going to use this bowl here just to kind of help support that stigma so I could put a little bit of pressure and use as much pollen. I personally <clears throat> believe, excuse me, that the more pollen you get on the stigma, the bigger your fruit's going to get. So I don't particularly click care so much when the flowers are facing up. Um, it, it makes collecting the pollen harder. I guess in this situation it's going to be good for documentation purposes but to gather that pollen out you can see it it, it it all wants to stay here it funnels into basically the the bottom of of the uh, flower so that's not very efficient for us um, so what I'm gonna do just hold that stigma up and just give it a generous amount of pollen here and make sure that yeah then I'm gonna even take some of my droppings get it back in my bowl so fresh pollen is really some good stuff. Wow, so we have, as you can see, four flowers here. Even though we have the lights in the greenhouse, we still wear a headlamp. And this is obviously helping us tonight to film. But um, sometimes they cast shadows and the headlamp is still real good to get into a particular spot where you can see real good. Make sure that you got plenty of pollen where you want to put it. Wow, I don't know if you just, if the camera caught that, but a generous amount of pollen just fell right off.
All right, we have one more here. brush it all around over on this side we have a few more white flesh flowers this is a nitzel variety and go ahead and dust those real quick And I guess for time's sake, what I'm going to go ahead and do now, um, we would collect all of that, but let's go take a look at the red flesh varieties that we have blooming tonight, which is here. Open that up a little bit. So I'm just going to grab some of that pollen and put it right on that stigma. Just like that. And then sometimes you're in a really weird situation where you can't get to the flower. Like, let's say that's this is the case, although it's not. You can take the pollen and dust it and just throw it on that stigma. And that's a very uh, inefficient way of conserving your pollen. However, um, when you want to ensure that it's going to get that pollen on there, then I would, I would go back and dust it real quick. So if you have a few other uh, species here, these cute little guys. Looking good and as you can see here's another red flesh variety called uh, Macasupa and we would use the remaining pollen that we have here and pollinate all our red flowers then I would go back and I'm going to collect some of these red flesh varieties so here's a nice different flower we'll go ahead and grab some of that pollen it may be compatible with some of the other reds put that in the in the mixing bowl um, we have our favorite one of our favorites for sure Look at the pollen. Those are not yellow petals. That is pure pollen there. So, um, unfortunately, it doesn't work on this particular variety, which is um, Hello Sirius Costa Recensis. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure, because we want every last one of these flowers to fruit for us. It has an amazing tartness. It has one of the best acidity uh, values in a fruit we find. It's a very uh, nice looking flower here, um, along with some of these other reds. So, I think that about wraps things up. We'll continue on, but 
Um, if you would like to see <clears throat> the progress, um, just uh, post some comments uh, that you'd like to see what these flowers would look like once they're fruit and we'll go ahead and post a part two video. Um, so I hope this answers uh, any questions that we may have had in regards to how we pollinate. Uh, most of the time every night we're mixing at least four different varieties. So we typically get in the high 90 percentile uh, when we want to set fruit even though most of these varieties you're looking at are non-self-fertile. Why? I have one, two, three, four, five, six different reds blooming tonight. We have two different whites blooming tonight and we have a purple. So the combination of that pollen, passing it around, mixing it up constantly, just is a increases our chances of, of setting fruit. Thanks for watching. Good night.